Hey, YouTubers, it's more from of it. Guys, I was watching Chef John the other day. He did a video on hamburgers that he put bread in them. And that reminded me of when I was a kid, we were poor. That's how we would extend our hamburgers. And we know when you get older, one thing reminds you of something else. And pretty soon you think of something else. So I started thinking about all of the things we used to eat when I was a kid, when we were poor. So I thought that would make kind of a cool video. You know, you don't know what's happening with the economy nowadays. It never hurts to get some more ideas and maybe a few blasts from the past. So these are some of the things that I remember eating when I was a kid, when we were poor. We grew up in Miami, pretty poor. And starting off with the, the burgers that Chef John made, we made burgers, but we added our bread, not because it improved the flavor, it was to stretch the, the hamburger farther. But it's important that you use the hamburger that has a lot of fat in it. I can remember to this day, my mom complaining about the hamburger she would buy in later days where it didn't have enough fat in it for her. But, but we always had onions. Chef John didn't add any onions to his, but they taste so much better. But we would also purchase, I remember like in the early 70s, we were still kind of broke. Things were kind of rough. And they would sell textured vegetable protein, a soy product that people could add to their hamburger meat to make it stretch farther. But but it actually makes a fairly decent burger. You don't want to add too much bread. I would say no more than 15, 20% total. But you want to add some more spices and onions. Otherwise, it's kind of bland. Next is fried bologna with white bread and mustard. Actually, even though this was something we ate when we were poor, I, I kind of like these today. They're, I mean, I don't have them often. I don't eat much uh, deli meat, but that to me is still a pleasant taste on fresh white bread with mustard, uh, fried bologna out of the pan. That That's a good deal. I remember eating those when I was a kid. No baked cookies. We didn't have many desserts back then. In fact, back in the early 60s, we got uh, commodity food from the welfare department. They didn't have cards. You'd go to the store and buy whatever you want. They gave you boxes of food that were like wheat and cornmeal and uh, peanut butter, things like that. Well, they had some recipes that would give you. One of the recipes was for dessert. Maybe the only dessert they had. You had to buy your own cocoa, but you mix cocoa with peanut butter, oats, and some milk. We had powdered milk they gave us. And you mix it in the pan on top of the stove, no baking. And you made little balls of, of dessert. And you put them in the refrigerator, it got cold. And we would eat them so much, our stomach would hurt. They were, they were, I'm going to leave a link to a woman. I found the only person on YouTube that actually makes these. She has a recipe. It's the same ones we made back in the 60s. Um, they're, they're, I wouldn't mind having some right now, actually. Uh, I think it's because we didn't have anything else. I mean, there are other better desserts, but that was a wonderful, inexpensive, highly nutritious dessert. Kool-Aid. <laughs> We were so poor, sometimes we would buy the generic Kool-Aid. It was, it was sad. <laughs> the, the root beer Kool-Aid just tasted like it had been sitting next to a root beer with nothing. <laughs> yeah, we, this was, we didn't have any Pepsi or, or any Coca-Cola. We, we had, we had Kool-Aid. Um, that, that was it. Uh, grilled Velveeta, same thing with cheese. It was a long time before I had any grilled cheese and I, I'm still, crazy about cheese but yeah Velveeta on white bread grilled and uh, the skillet yeah that's uh that was a common common treat peanut butter and jelly every day for almost 12 years of school for lunch I had peanut butter and jelly occasionally if I had bullies in my class I would bring a salami sandwich that way when they hid my lunch I could find out by the smell but peanut butter and jelly <laughs> yeah I thought if, if there's anything bad with peanut butter and jelly I should have been dead years ago um Oh, there was a store in Miami, two of them, Frederick's and Shell's over on 61st Street Northeast. And I would go with, when I was with a kid with my mom, and they, I would be fascinated by all the foods they had. And uh, I remember later on trying to get her to try different things when we were poor. She, I, I convinced her to try chicken necks, and she was really upset with me. There was like, after we took away the skin and the bones, there was like a couple of tablespoons of meat, and it wasn't that tasty. I remember later years buying conch at Frederick's when it was so cheap back then, like 29 cents a pound. Now it's like $12, I guess, a pound. But nobody told me when you we eat conch, you prepare it, you have to pound on it to soften it up. So when I cooked mine, it was like cooking or eating a, a, a rubber tire. It was terrible. And same thing with a beef tongue. No one told me you're supposed to peel the beef tongue. So when I sliced it up and cooked it, it had the little taste buds on it. So when I was tasting it, it was tasting me. It was like I couldn't eat it. 
I had to get rid of it. Um, so I would occasionally try different things when we were, you know, had no money back then years ago, but I, I wasn't always successful. Um, this is something my mom told me she had when she was a kid, when they were poor. My grandmother would make noodles homemade and lay them over the chair that had newspaper over the back of it to dry. And they had students evidently somewhere. This was back in Pennsylvania, like Erie someplace, I guess, or some other part of Pennsylvania. And they, uh, they had prunes that they stewed with noodles. And she got a really funny look on her face. I don't, this was not a pleasant memory, <laughs> but, <laughs> but that's, they had nothing else to eat. That was something. This is one of my favorite meals we had when I was a kid, when we were poor was you'd get the spaghetti, obviously pasta, that's cheap. And if you had an expensive hamburger and then you put some onions in the pan with the, the fat from the hamburgers and fry it up and simmer it real slow with some tomato sauce from a can. And it's just still one of my favorite meals. Um, it's fairly inexpensive. This is, I don't think they have ice milk anymore. Ice milk was basically a, uh, a fake milk with chemicals and coloring. And, uh, <laughs> if you, if you, if you had some leftover in your, in your dish and you put it in the sink and you ran water, it would make foam that would come up to the top of the sink. It was like, <laughs> ah, that's a sign of freshness. No, <laughs> yeah, I don't think they make this anymore, but yeah. Because, you know, ice cream was too expensive. Um, oh, I, I wasn't sure I was going to tell this story. I remember one time we were really down at the bottom of the barrel. This was terrible. And uh, well, I used to fish over in a canal, and these ducks, Muscovy ducks, they're wild ducks, they would bother me when I was fishing. And I, we ran out of food, and uh, we had like a couple slices of bread in the house. I told my mom, give me a slice of bread. I'll go over across the canal and have one of these ducks come close to me, and I'll kill it and have it for something to eat. And she was, you sure you can, because this is all the bread we have left. And I went over there and the ducks came from like to 10 feet close to me. They, they, they must have known that I was ready to, to jump on them. But I, I remember, I think I had a stick or something. But, but my neighbors across the canal, if they saw me, they would probably would have called the police. And even though it's a wild duck, it's not against the law, they would have called the law on me for killing the animals. But man, I, we were hungry. <laughs> and they're not pets. They, they were wild ducks. But uh, yeah. I, I'm kind of glad that the ducks didn't get close to me. That was that was a close call. Um, for years, 12 years of school, uh, I think the beginning of the school year, I always got upset stomach. And uh, during the summertime, my mom wouldn't cook, cook lunches for us. She had six kids, but in, in the school years, she school cooked uh, egg sandwiches for breakfast. And every summer, when summer ended, I'd wake up and I'd smell the egg sandwich my mom was making and I'd get sick to my stomach because I knew there was time to go to school again. And uh, for a long time, I wasn't too happy about egg sandwiches, but I, I kind of eat them a lot now. But um, that's something inexpensive we had growing up was egg sandwiches on white bread with ketchup. Mmm, wow. Not that appetizing, really. Um, We'd have pork chops very, very rare occasions. They'd be very inexpensive, very thin pork chops. And I would eat those pork chops. I would say plural, so I'd usually get one. And when I was done, I would have eaten that bone so much, there was nothing left. There was no even flavor. So when I gave it to the dog, the dog would look at me and he would give me this dirty look like, eh. and there was nothing left on the bone for the dog. I sucked the marrow of those pork chop bones. And my mom would fry them so, like, they would just crumble anyway. And uh, that was one of my favorite things to eat. We didn't have them very often, though. Um, my stepdad was from up north, and uh, he would eat beans and cornbread. I always thought that was a southern thing, but but he was addicted to beans. He had, it was like a ritual. He had, as soon as one pot finished, he had, he never used a pressure cooker. He'd make the white beans, sometimes lima beans, but year after year after year, till the day he died, he always had beans. Um, so we had a lot of beans and cornbread. Um, cornbread, I've, I've grown to, to like it as I cook it differently now, but back then it would, it would become dry within hours and it was not that, I mean, you dump it, dunk it in milk and stuff, but no, it's not a big fan of it. But, but as years gone by, I've kind of like it now. So that was a very popular thing we ate when I was a kid. This is something, um, I had a, a friend, a neighbor, he said when he was poor, they ate a lot of grits and, and grunts. 
Um, the thing about, he told me about, this is the, the cool thing about grits. I, if you make oatmeal, you have one part oat and two parts water. Or if you, if you make uh, rice, you know, one part rice and two parts water. But grits has one part grits and four parts water. So grits, really, you can make a lot more grits uh, than you can the other the, the, the pasta or, or grains. Um, and the grunts, he said, <laughs> if the grits had been in the bag for a long time, they would get weevils and they would get a little larva in, in the grits and they would use the, the little wor larva to catch the grunts. So he had fish and grits, grits and grunts. And I was thinking to myself, you know, that would be like uh, a really good survival thing. Get, get you a sack of grits and then if they ever got the little weevils, you could use them to catch fish. Because uh, grunts are salt water, but you have freshwater fish, pan fish, you could use the same method. But that would be like a, a survival method <laughs> that, that uh, you could uh, depend on. Um, but uh, yeah, that, that's, that's a possibility. Um, my grandmother, she said that when, that was like back in the Depression years, that the three things the mo that helped them the most was pancakes, dumplings, and gravy. Because if you had any meat at all, you could make gravy. And the dumplings and pancakes. Dumplings was always good to make any soup you'd make or stew. And pancakes was just flour and water, basically, you know, and a little bacon powder. Um, so that was three things that really helped them when things were tough. Um, this is a dish we had a lot. Was uh, If we had any hamburger meat or any other, we'd have rice or noodles with the gravy. And still, I kind of like, uh, it, like stroganoff, you know, you make a little rice. It's not something I have often, but still, it, it's a comfort food. Um, yeah, you're probably asking, where's the vegetables? I don't, we occasionally had lettuce and tomato, but I don't remember, you know, we had cans of uh, corn or peas. Uh, but basically, the only one I remember would, occasionally my mom would make cucumbers and vinegar and I would have them and eat them and then remember why I didn't have them that often until I forgot about why I didn't eat them and then have them again. It was sort of like pot pies. You, you don't, you know, why haven't you eaten this a long time? Then after you eat it, you realize that's why. <laughs> I wasn't a big fan of cucumbers and vinegar. This is a meal that if I was in prison and they said, what's your last meal? My mom would make macaroni and cheese, but real macaroni and cheese with big elbow macaroni. Three ingredients. You had milk, real cheddar cheese, and the macaroni. Well, salt and pepper. And the cool thing about it, she'd bake it, which was a rarity because here in South Florida, you, I hardly ever use a stove because it, you'd heat up the house. But when she would bake the macaroni and cheese, the cheddar would get all crispy and brown and, 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 and kind of crispy and tough on the edges of the pan. And that was one of my favorite meals. It was so rich and thick because she used uh, oleo margarine. We didn't know the difference back then. We thought that was healthier for you. It was certainly cheaper, so we didn't use butter. But if you use the butter and the cheddar and just the milk and the salt and the pepper, real simple, plain ingredients, you bake it in the stove, put layers of cheese with the, the, the pasta and the butter and the milk. Oh man, that's one of my favorite all-time meals. Um, we knew things were getting tight when my mom would make salmon patties. I know a few times my mom babysit kids at home to make money for years and occasionally the parents would come as my mom was making dinner and she would see her making, uh, they would see her making salmon patties and they thought that was exotic. We knew that was, we were getting close to the bottom of the barrel. We didn't have much money left because back then salmon in a can was rather inexpensive and you'd mix it up with cracker crumbs and so on and fry it in some oil and uh, that was actually tasty but it was like a we was it was foreshadowing the, <laughs> the next ingredient of dinner which was uh the saddest meal of the bunch was sad pancakes with homemade do-it-yourself syrup uh this was the probably the bottom other than the muscovy duck um the uh she'd make her own syrup out of sugar which was cool to me it was like i think that's why i got interested in chemistry um she would make her own solution of of syrup with the with the sugar and the water on the stove but yeah those were those were tough days when we had the pancakes for dinner um this was something we didn't have often but it was uh, i remember it very fondly Just my mom would buy big big cans of campbell's beef and barley i don't think they make it anymore and she used a big 
uh, elbow macaroni from Muller's and cans of tomato with spices, maybe some bay leaves and cook it on the stove. And the big noodles and tomatoes, it was a wintertime meal and it didn't get cold at often, but when it did, this was something she would make and rather inexpensive and it fed the whole family. It was delicious. But I don't think they sell those big cans of beef barley anymore. Now, occasionally we would forge. I remember when I was a kid, uh, we would the, the we would go to the day old bakery there in uh, Little River, and they would throw out stuff behind the store that there was. They, but my brothers would buy to get the bear claws and the donuts and bring them home, and we would do fishing and stuff. I remember my father. This was early years and years ago. Perhaps it has to be very early '60s. Was I was just a tiny tiny kid, but I remember. He and my grandfather had caught a turtle in the bay, which I think was illegal even back then. And they took it to a, a butcher in town somewhere under the table and they cooked it up and they made a big sea turtle soup. Um, but uh, he would bring fish home. And uh, I remember the kids, we would get the guavas and the cherries and the mulberries in the neighborhood and stuff. So uh, that was some of the stuff we would forge, I remember. So. The last thing I remember, I think this is probably my earliest memory of food, was uh, eating soft white bread with oleo margarine and, and cold jam, uh, grape jam. Uh, not jelly, it was jam. And to, even to this day, it kind of makes a smile on my face. Oh, you feed something like this. Although I don't have oleo that often. Who buys oleo? But um, yeah, on the white bread, I'm soft. A uh, day old, maybe. <laughs> so. Those are some of the, my memories of stuff we ate when I was a kid and we were really poor. And uh, a couple of them I think are kind of cool that maybe you hadn't heard about before. And I'd be interested in what are some of the things you ate when you were a kid or maybe even now that you ate when you were poor or you still are eating. <laughs> so I hope you like this video. I put on new stuff every single week. Been doing it for 15 years. Got over a thousand videos. Rob's on me life. And uh, I've got a playlist of recipes. And I've also been making some uh, crazy cheap meal videos I think you might be interested in. So hope this was something fun for you guys. A little different for the channel. And uh, take care. See you out there.